Hey everybody, in this video we're going to define the integral through the limit of a Riemann sum. Actually, we're just going to kind of put some background to some of the notation that we've been using. To help us with that, we're going to revisit sigma notation. It's a concise way or concise notation for sums using the symbol, we have a sigma. All right, the sum of n terms, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, dot, 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 to a sub n is written as. Okay, so if you think about what we've been doing, we've been finding areas and rectangles and summing them. And if we have a whole bunch of rectangles and we want to sum the areas, instead of writing out a, a sub 1 plus a sub 2, where a represents the area in these rectangles, 1, rectangle 2, etc., instead of doing all of this, that's a dot, 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 plus a sub n. Okay, instead of doing that, we can say that we can represent that sum by, let me come over here where I have maybe a little more space, okay, using the sigma notation symbol. Okay, and it says where k is the index of summation. And instead of k, sometimes we see i, sometimes we see lowercase j. Okay, it just is, it helps us count, that's all. So down here, we're going to say, well, k is equal to 1, where 1 represents the area in the first rectangle. We're just keeping count of all the rectangles. Okay, and maybe this lower limit, this k equals 1, okay, goes to this upper limit of the nth rectangle. Okay, so we have uh, the sum of the rectangles from k equals 1 to n, that's how they're numbered, okay, of a sub k. So let's think about that for a minute. If I start counting with k equals 1 and replace it in here for k, I get a sub 1. So this is what I get over here. Then k goes to 2, so I have a sub 2. And this symbol right here just means to put an addition sign between them. So this expansion right here can be collapsed to this new notation right here. Okay, and that's going to help us with uh, defining the integral to the limit of a Riemann sum. All right, so just kind of go with me. All right where k is the index of summation, which is what we have, and a sub k is the kth term of the sum, and the upper and lower bounds of summation are n and 1, the upper limit and the lower limit. Okay, anyway, just this notation right here is what we need. All right, let's consider a function, y equals f of x. It's non-negative. It's above the x-axis, and it's integrable. I can integrate it over a closed interval a to b. Whichever method is chosen to calculate the area, we must sum the rectangular areas, whether we're using a left ram, right ram, midpoint ram. And what I've been holding back on you is something else. Okay, You don't have to have a left uh, Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum, or a midpoint Riemann sum. I could choose any input in my interval, not the left side, right side, midpoint. I could choose any particular c value, if you will, c value, um, where um, that determines the height of the rectangle. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at that over here. All right, let's draw a function. Maybe something like this. And let's consider that we're con uh, looking at the a value as our x of 1 and the b value as our x of 2. Okay, so I'm interested in this area right here. I want to find the area in this in this region. I'm going to approximate it by using rectangles. All right, if I can uh, call down here, if I can call a x sub 1 right here, I want to move off of x sub 1 some horizontal distance. Now I don't have to make these all equally partitioned and maybe I'm stopping right here at x sub 2 Okay, and let's say that somewhere in this interval right here, not left, not right, not midpoint, but let's just say that somewhere in here, um, I'm going to call this C sub 1 maybe. I'm going to call this value C sub 1. Somewhere in between X sub 1 and X sub 2, I'm going to call this C sub 1. Okay, I'm going to determine the height of the rectangle. So maybe I'm going to go up to the curve here. And I'd have to travel a little to the right, but more to the left to create the top that's necessary for this rectangle. And this is rectangle number one. 
All right, so we know how wide it is. It's the difference between x sub 2 and x sub 1. And the height is going to be the function evaluated at c sub 1. Okay, we're going to do another partition here okay, and get another rectangle. I'm going to come over here and do some side work, though, before I do that. Let's just say, for the sake of making this problem easy, we are going to make all of these rectangles um, have the same width. So remember, if you will, that delta x, the change in x, is equal to b minus a over n. Okay, so just for the ease of, you know, working with this problem, I, I think that that would be best if we did it this way. So as best I can, I'm going to say the next rectangle is going to go from x sub 2 to x sub 3. And let's say that somewhere in between here, x sub 2 and x sub 3, maybe, maybe closer to x sub 2 this time, but not at x sub 2 and not at x sub 3 and not at the midpoint, let's say that I want to let this c value between x sub 2 and x sub 3, which we'll call c sub 2, just because it puts me in the second rectangle. I'm keeping track of everything. Let's say that this c sub 2 right here is what determines the height of this rectangle. Okay, so meet the curve, draw a little to the left, but more to the right, okay, and complete your rectangle. So this is rectangle 2. And I'd find the area in rectangle 2 and sum it to the area in rectangle 1. Well, this can go on. I, I can continue. Okay, let me get a different color here. Let's say I'm going to go from now x sub 3 to x sub 4. And I choose yet a different c value in between x sub 3 and x sub 4. And I'll call this c sub 3 just to indicate that I'm in the third rectangle. At c sub 3, go up and meet the curve. Okay, it appears to be almost to the midpoint okay, of that partition, so it looks like I'm going to travel about the same as I, uh, to the left as I do to the right. I'm not going to say for certain it's at the midpoint, but this is just a, a quick sketch. Okay, this is rectangle 3. Alright, so let me come back over here and say, okay, the height of this rectangle is determined by C sub 3, so I'm going to say the height is the functional value at C sub 3. And I need to come back over here and also indicate the height of the second rectangle is the function evaluated at c sub 2. And this could continue. I could have rectangle 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. Well, at some point, I'm going to kind of generalize. So now let me talk about the kth rectangle. Just if you will, for just a minute, imagine that somewhere over here I've partitioned and I've gotten what we're going to call a kth rectangle. So I'm going to call this input right here x sub n. I'm going to call this input x sub n right here. And then I have the end of my interval at b. You can call that x sub n plus 1 if you want to. Just notation. So maybe we're going to let b be x sub n plus 1. I know it's just, it's kind of abstract. All right, so between x sub n and x sub n plus 1, let's choose a c value. Okay, and I'm going to call this c sub k because I'm actually going to name this the kth rectangle. I don't know which one it is. I'm tired of counting, but it's the kth rectangle. So this notation c sub k just determines the height of the kth rectangle. So at c sub k, I'm going to go up, meet the curve, Travel a little to the left, probably a little more to the right. Okay, and draw in my kth rectangle. So what's the height? Well, it's the function evaluated at c sub k. All right, well, I think we've done enough with this uh, region right here. So let's come back over here. This is asking us to find the area of the rectangle. Oops, sorry about that. This is asking us to find the area of a rectangle. All right, to find the area of a rectangle, we need the base times the height. Well, we do have a representation for the base. is delta x. 
Okay, so let's just talk about what's the width of each of these. Well, it's determined by how wide the rectangle is, but let's just talk about generically speaking, I guess abstractly speaking, let's talk about the kth rectangle. All right, so I'm going to say that the base of the kth rectangle is delta x sub k. All right, well, what's the height? Well, the height of any of these, okay, and, but especially the kth rectangle, is going to be the function evaluated at c sub k. So now to find the area of the kth rectangle, we're going to say it's the functional value at c sub k, the height, times the base. And a very abstract, y'all, I'm going somewhere with this, just be patient. All right, and then look down here. What's different from this line that I have to this expression? Well, what's different is the summation notation. While this represents the area in just one rectangle, okay, this notation, k equals 1 to n, represents the area in every rectangle from 1 over to n. And K is just a random rectangle here. If I were to slide B over a little bit, I could call the last rectangle N. So this is summing up all the areas of the rectangles, where N is the number of rectangles. All right, let's take a look at the definite integral. The method of summing rectangular areas allows us to approximate the area under curve. To calculate this area exactly, we would need an infinite number of infinitely thin rectangles the limiting process of the Riemann sum that allows us to express the exact area under the curve is given by. Okay, let's start by looking at something right here in the middle, this space right here. Okay, let's take this notation that we were working with and just move it down here. And actually, we're going to use this notation right here. Let's consider the sum of a large number of thin rectangles, at least the area, Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as it tells us to do up here. Let's find the limit, it's been a while since we've done this, as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity. Well, if we think about what that means, is if n goes to infinity, think about what delta x does, the width of the rectangles. That decreases to zero. So two things are happening here. Okay, and if we go backwards to the left, let's think about what all of this means. Okay, that's the exact area under the curve. It's the area of all rectangles. So just notation to give you background. So the area of all rectangles is equal to the sum of a finite number of rectangles, but bring the limit to it. Okay, take it to infinity. Okay, what happened over the years is this. That this ugly kind of notation evolved into okay, the integral. This means a summing. So that kind of takes the place of sigma. Okay, the lower limit, k equals 1, was now replaced with a, our beginning x value. n represents a number of rectangles, but where do we stop collecting the areas of rectangles? At b, so beginning x, ending x. Okay, and then how that kind of evolved and changed was, this is a functional value. c sub k evolved into f of x, and delta sub x sub k evolved into the differential of x. So this is just the, the evolution of the notation, if you will, okay, and how to go about actually finding an exact area will be done at a later time. Okay, so this is all well and good. What are you going to be asked to do in your homework? Well, here's an example that I pulled out of the, the textbook that's very similar to something you're going to be asked to do. Right, express the limit of the Riemann sums, that's what this is, a limit of the Riemann sums, as an integral. So it's saying, rewrite it in this nicer notation. If P denotes a partition, P, of the interval from negative 1 to 3. Now, paying attention to what's going on here, this is A and this is B. We're partitioning this x value to this later x value. All right, so I know this is going to evolve into an integral. It's not 1 to n as my lower and upper limit. It's negative 1 to 3. I'll get back there. Okay, so we're going to drop all of this notation. This is actually the function. C sub k gets replaced with x, just like I did up here. 
So this becomes 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. And we know with an integral symbol, like I have here, that I need a differential, a dx. Okay, and that's actually the replacement of delta x sub k. All right, and you might be thinking, well, what is this, you know, right here, this notation? Well, that just means uh, with the double absolute value bars, if you will, will that um, p is just however you decide to divide up the region. And it, so it just actually represents the thickness of each rectangle, and that's going to go to zero row which we understand that the number of rectangles would go to infinity. So easy enough, not bad. All right, now somewhere on a different sheet of paper or the back of this sheet of paper, we have yet one more thing to look at, and that's properties of integrals. So I'm just going to turn this paper over, I guess, if you will, and um, look at five properties with you. So I'll join you in a second.